it out. Okay, so so um, I see a lot of people do what they call investing. Okay, and investing in the ICO market. And they don't look at any fundamentals. They don't look at the things that traditional successful investors uh, have looked at. For instance, um, if you look at a lot of comments on social media, Veritation is a scam. Why? Look at their website. What does the website have to do with it? anything? <laughs> we haven't even launched a product yet. Look at the website. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the website, but that's nearly here or there. Um, um, Veritation is vaporware. Why? Because where's their white paper? Have you bothered to look at the business model? Look at our competitors. Ask the same question. Goldman Sachs is vaporware. Why? Where's Goldman Sachs white paper? <laughs> have, you, have you ever read Goldman Sachs white paper? No. Morgan Stanley's white paper? Nobody? Citibank's white paper. Okay. <laughs> Do they have white papers? Why are we talking about white papers? A white paper is an academic thesis about something that doesn't exist. Okay? Um, now, a lot of this is targeted because they don't want a certain person, a certain product, or a certain business model to succeed. Some of it is actually serious. And that's very, very dangerous when you have that level of, and I hate to say it, ignorance, real a certain amount of capital because they have very low, low cost basis through other successes, going after basically a lot of inventory. That's what's driving the prices up. There needs to be a very serious shakedown. If you have a long-term perspective and you don't care what happens quarter to quarter and you have the capital that enjoy liquidity, then when that shakedown comes, now it's time to start buying large swaths of infrastructure. But you have to be able to recognize infrastructure and have access to it. Back again to my blatant and unapologetic discussion of beta and infrastructure. I'm selling infrastructure based upon my ability or lack thereof of producing quality products and producing innovative services, uh, such as forensic research. To this time, to this day, there's still no forensic research on uh, iPhones besides us. Um, I put out the research for free. I rushed it in the beginning, and my analysts are all sure, so it was a little sloppy, but it was very, very busy doing the iPhone. Now everything's went very smoothly. Um, if I would have had the chance to print it out, I would distribute the populist research. You see how it's done. Very, very well done in my opinion. Um, but people don't even understand the retail I call consumer doesn't understand the research. They say we call all these revenue projections. They don't make sense. They haven't started producing revenue. These are startups. So you're not saying it's worth this. What you're doing is giving a conditional valuation. If they execute at this level with this amount of revenue and this margin, this is a value. Okay, if they have an issue equity, or if they have equity, and they have a utility token, and they have a fixed uh, price token, stable token, this would be the value of the enterprise and the value of the token. This level of analysis just doesn't exist. But the reason is the environment still consists mostly of software engineers and developers, and not a lot of uh, analytical finance guys who are not from uh, a business model that it's compensated by pushing inventory. Tech and economics are, you know, very different subjects. And so, you know, you have a lot of people who have realized a ton of success on the technology platform. But as, you know, we all talk about scaling often, you know, if we scale, truly scale into a global marketplace, then, you know, economics do start to matter. And having a comprehension of that becomes very important. I think that gets lost on a lot of people in this segment. I agree. So, uh, back to the uh, software, and currently, the software is basically a, a bunch of web pages, dynamic web pages. Um, I like this. I consider it a piece of art. It has no server, no traditional server. So the web pages load off of a distributed uh, hard drive, IPFS, and a blockchain. So, by not having a server, that means when you, very bad guy, comes to hack the server, there is no server to hack. No point for it. Okay. Now, there is a server. The server is distributed against 11,000 different nodes. Hmm. So you have to hack, hack about all 11,000 of them. But to do that, you have to find them. Then you have to get into it. Then you get hacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very difficult. It's, it's actually a, more secure that way. It's a mission. <laughs> exactly. 
So, um, in addition, um, it is fully distributed. When people talk about decentralization, so this is centralized, this is decentralized, distributed means spread all throughout. And full distribution, now we have an architecture that's unique. And it has an interface that looks like software versus most blockchain apps, which um, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a nerd, so you can call me a technologist in that sense, but I'm not a software engineer developer. Um, and I think a lot of software developers should never develop an interface without being surrounded by lay people because they develop things that are essentially unusable. Um, GitHub, I can't stand it. <laughs> you know, whenever I need to do something and find something, it takes me minutes to find things that are simple, which should be simple to use, like adding a new user. I have to find, this should just, new user, it should be very simple. The reason is, all, all developers, all my developers love GitHub. I'm like, no, post it on Slack and I'll answer it because I'm not going to GitHub. <laughs> GitHub is an example of a very popular program that was made by developers for developers. Okay, if you haven't seen it before, it takes time just to log in and get started, which is ridiculous. So I wanted to make it anti GitHub. So I didn't do any I didn't do any of the development here by the way. So this is the Vader. Vader stands for Veritasium uh, Autonomous. Autonomous means acting on its own, of itself, without a third party, authoritative third party. Dynamic. It works up and down all by itself. Interactive, because you can participate in the research. So, we take research, which I haven't showed you yet, um, uh, forensic and fundamental analysis of uh, populace, of PayPal, of Ethereum, of Bitcoin. We do platforms, we do entities, we do everything. We do opportunities, we do a macro opportunity. Um, the result of what happens when the EU finally pays the piper for going negative um, interest rates. Okay, <laughs> we're going to tokenize that. That is a guaranteed smash. Damn. You go negative interest rates, you create the rich and risk, that's really out of the universe. What happens when you take your negative interest rate and it's either you go positive or it's forced positive by the market? Realize that there are people who bought 75 year and 100 year bonds at negative interest rates. Negative interest rates are guaranteed loss, and that's assuming rates never move. And they're not going to stay negative forever. If they do, you're going to be like Japan and you can have a 38 year loss decade. Zombie. And decades only 10 years, but they had a 38 year loss decade because they did a negative interest rate thing. Europe can't mimic Japan's performance because Japan's, most of them are debt holders or Japanese citizens. Mm -hmm. So they can roll that over in perpetuity. Most so of the European died. bond holders are sitting in Asia and America. But that's neither here or there. Let's suppose we tokenize that opportunity, we create to veritize that opportunity. Long, you know, EU blow up, short EU blow up. Okay, we add this to populist, to Ethereum, to Bitcoin, etc. Um, the, the research says we go long on this basket of tokens. So when you go to the beta, this one should have had it here. I'll be able to pass it around. Here, let's pass it around. Don't drop it, I just bought that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So I go through a lot of computers because I'm always lacking in sleep and I always put it in the front cockpit of the airplane. I get up and walk off. You know, before I was there. Another one, you know. So just get a cover. Yeah, or, or, or I should stop putting it in the front pocket, but I don't, you know, that's one of my many failures. Just get a private channel. Yeah, you can do that too. That's a cheaper way to do it. Actually, I bought so many computers, I probably bought a private jet by now. So what you're looking at is the Vader, that's the portfolio page. That will also be the landing page of the Veritasium.com website. Yes, we are doing that website over. And um, basically it shows financial statistics up top. You know, basically size of portfolio, average ROI, etc. And it shows the trades that are happening on the right. And it shows the actual, what is now a model portfolio. Um, now, to participate in that, you can go several ways. You can have your own Veritasium tokens, which are the key to get in, and you have your own capital, which is currently F, and then you enter it and to get your proportionate uh, piece of the pot. Uh, don't, don't change your page quite yet. Pass it around and I'll go walk through it. Okay? And, um, or you can have Veritas tokens, but you don't have the capital, so you can rent your tokens either on an economic basis or a contract basis. Does anybody know the economic contract method fits? No, no, what? Okay. So, economic rent is basically uh, the cost that it takes to get you out of the bed to go to work in the morning. Okay. Um, you have. 
But is it the cost to buy your token, or how do you? I, I'll that? explain. It. So first, let's take tokens out. Just use basic economic rent. Let's suppose you're an accountant. You make a uh, hundred thousand dollars a year, and that gets you out of the bed to go to work every day. But you have a competitor that says um, the average, you know, salary for that area is a hundred thousand dollars, but um, I want to move in and compete with it, your employer. So I'm going to pay you $150,000. I want to see you from a competitor. So I'm like, okay, I'll get up, but I'm going to go to a new employer now. So the difference between $150,000 and 100000 is economic rent. right? And that's basically the amount that's paid over what was considered the fundamental value of whatever the asset the transaction is, which would be the account. Okay, so economic rent in this case is the price that someone will pay to rent their tokens to someone who doesn't have tokens in order for someone to gain entrance into the application. Um, the reason they do that is they can't don't have access to tokens, they don't feel it's worth getting tokens, etc. So you rent the tokens. It's another amount. Right, but you do it at a price. And the price would be a percent of the PL. And it's but you lend your specific token, so eventually you're gonna get your specific tokens back. No, because it's economic rent. So uh, you, know, you get whatever the value of your tokens were at the point at the particular time back. You, you know, you'll you'll get whatever you negotiate with the rentee for in terms of RRI participation in PL. In particular, whatever currency that you're speculating. Not, not the Black Street comes in and they say, uh, we want to uh, I tokenize this building, they say, you know, we want to get in a part of that deal. Okay? We don't have this building goes for uh, I don't know Miami prices, but let's say uh, seventy eight million dollars. Okay, so with seventy-eight million dollars, um, Black Street needs, say, seven point eight million dollars or seven hundred, whatever number, seven point eight million dollars uh, to get into the deal and verify those tokens. They can't source it, they can't get it, they don't want to buy it, etc. You decide to rent them economically the seven point eight million, but you say I want ten percent of the PL. Okay, it's really P because well, you're not going to get anything, so you want ten percent of the profit. That ten percent of the profit is the price that you're paying, uh, that they're paying you to get access to the tokens. To get in. Right, and they get in. Can you see this one more time? Cause you, uh, well, I, I didn't get to the rental part yet. So that's economic rent. Contract rent is a little easier to understand. It's very similar to when you rent an apartment. When you rent your apartment, um, you go in, you say, I'm going to pay $2,000 a month rent. Okay, I'm going to put another $4,000 up as collateral, which is security deposit and pay you know, one or two months up front. At the end of the contract term, okay, you give the apartment back, and assuming there's no damage, you get your collateral back. Just like a margin, uh, margin um, purchase, uh, purchase of uh, securities or margin, right? You have collateral, which are the securities. And it's cleared back to you. And it's cleared back to you. In this scenario, you get your veritas tokens back. Okay, so, so this is the beta, okay? These are the trades. Right. This, this is not your. This is the entire. Right. This is the entire um, portfolio transaction. So now we click here. This is a menu. Yeah, I don't know how to get everybody. <laughs> yeah. so, Everybody's first time. First time, you know, it's, 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 it's such a small screen. I'll pass it around again. So get yeah, step out the camera. Wait. So, so you click the menu. Okay. Number one, you have different currency translations. So you can translate that interface in U.S. dollars, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Euro, British pounds, um, Chinese renminbi, and Japanese yen. Okay, so, so the only two cryptos are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Excuse me. Two, two cryptos. Are Bitcoin yeah, and because most people that would want them here, right? Okay, so yeah, I just translated it to Ethereum. Now everything's displayed in Ethereum. Yeah, I blow it up nice and big. Everything's displayed in Ethereum now. Now I go. And I go in as uh, the VE rent. How about Boostock? Excuse How about Boostock? I know you on Twitter, you mentioned that Boostock, you have a report. Can you elaborate on Boostock's implementation? Well, I don't know much about Boostock's I just talked to them and they said that it was a straight report. We are blockchain agnostic. My business is not to build blockchain. My business is to create disruptive apps to allow you to do this with him. Interact with each other. Right. Okay. Um, according to Boostock, EOS, Neo and others, they basically, and the smart thing to do is to make your blockchain solidly compatible, or batch compatible. So you can switch it. So it's easy to switch. Right. Now, be careful, because I'm blockchain agnostic, and I don't really care who wins, but Ethereum has a massive head start on everybody else. It's easy, to, right, it's easy to say Ethereum has this, that, that problem. 
Ethereum is also running more transactions than I think any other blockchain. Now, what about what about when Ethereum starts running all the DApps, all these all these systems? It slows them down. It slows them down, but they also going proof of uh, stake. So yeah, proof of stake is going to take a lot of the heavy lifting off, but that's going to introduce more bugs and more security issues because it's new. Okay. Either way, they're going to stay ahead. Right? right. But the same thing's going to happen to everybody to start off. When you start from scratch, Ethereum had to rewrite the entire programming language because you know it didn't work in reality. But you had to experience reality before you knew that. So I'm not saying I'm pro Ethereum or anti XYZ. I'm saying nothing beats the test of time. Bitcoin is the most rudimentary of all the Bitcoin mm -hmm. of all the blockchains. It's also stood the test of time. It's never been hacked or compromised. The blockchain itself, right? It's been compromised. People didn't put their patches in, but that's more than users for, not the blockchain's fault. It's the only immutable protocol. Yeah, you know. Well, I'm not going to do it. I was going to say it should have been somebody else, but we'll be able to skip the question. So, with the rental app, you can either get very tokens by renting it for somebody or go off your own, right? Here we have the tokens available. There's a window. You click the plus button. It's a very much unlike GitHub. You click the plus. It's a very simple, very simple form to fill out. Here you can read it out and you can fill it out if you want. This is limited. It's a beta, it's not supposed to be in operation, so I limited it to 0 0.001 very, which would give you, no, 0.01 very. Yeah, 0.01 very, which gets you exposure of 1F, and there's a hard cap on that. And then we have, we had a cap of 7 days, I lifted it to 30 days, so people can use it a little more. And, um, and these are private testing, private beta tests. And so it's easy to fill out, you fill out the form, you click submit, you get a, a warning that's a disclaimer that says you're about to do XYZ. You click OK, it pulls the F and the Ethereum out of your MetaMask plugin, and it goes to the blockchain. It's, it's assuming the F blockchain is running smoothly, 14 seconds, 20 seconds later, you have an exposure, it shows up. Now, if you want to sell your tokens, do